Okay. Hey, Pastor. Hey, Mary, a hey, Deacon Van. <laughs> Wait a minute, Deacon Van is on the call? Deacon Van is at Bible study and the Lakers are on? What a man of God. <laughs> a man. I know. That is a powerful sacrifice. <laughs> you might get elevated to Saint D. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> a pope, more like Pope. <laughs> How y'all doing, McClungs? Y'all doing okay? Um, not on, uh, not on Facebook. Let me go. <laughs> they stay there. They'll let you in. They'll let you in. Pastor Ron. Uh huh. How you doing? I'm doing well. How you doing, Pastor? How you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm All feeling, right. feeling good. I um, uh, <laughs> I forgot to to message you today. Oh, you know okay. I would be on. Okay. Oh, yeah. I want to talk about <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. Hey, hey Thomases. Good to see you guys. Hey, Sam. Hey, Deetra. Um, Hello. How you doing, Pastor? Hello. Hey, good. Good. Good to hear your voice. Good to see your face. Oh, yeah. We've been in the house. All right. Ron dropped knowledge on us last week. Yeah, I heard. I heard. He did a good job. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Good to you. Hold on. Let me get my book. Hey. Okay. Pastor, I'm going to go to Facebook Live today. It hasn't been a, a big turnout on YouTube. You read this. So I'm going to do it on Facebook Live today. Yeah. OK, good deal. Okay. OK. So it's setting up now. Let me see. Good deal. Okay. All right. Do we have any um, any um, special prayer requests? We're going to get started in about three minutes. Nicole, are you there? I think she just ran to do something real quick or something. OK. Okay. Hi, Mother Lois. Hey, Good to see you. Can me? Hey, big brother. Good to see you. All right. We are almost done with John. Uh, chapter 17 is a huge chapter, and uh, I'm glad that Pastor Ron um, was available to take you all through it. I didn't want us to get to continue to fall behind as we prepare for Daniel. Um, but chapter 17 of the Gospel of John is probably 
one of the most important chapters in all of the gospel as uh, it is considered um, Christ's high priestly prayer. Um, uh, it it uh, discuss or it uh, shows Christ praying uh, for himself uh, mm -hmm. and praying for us, his disciples. Uh, let me get this off, hold on a second. My lighting's not that good and I don't know what the heck is going on. Oh yeah, I see that. I really am a real person. I know it doesn't seem like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am not in space and I am not a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> Something's been going on with my screen. Right. Um, let me let me go back to this. Uh, and let me see what I can do over here. Okay. Let me share it. Okay, um, I'm not gonna be able to do that. I was gonna be able to go on my iPad and do it. Uh, let me try one more thing before I get into study tonight. <clears throat> I got one more option. Big hey brother, are you hiding your face on purpose? I am, yeah. Okay, very good. Do you see my face? <laughs> face. Have you, have you seen my face? That's your real face now. <laughs> Don't be <laughs> well, I'm in a virtual for some reason and I'm trying to get out of it. Okay. Um, That's cool. Virtually. Let's try this. Okay, Pastor, so you are streaming uh, Zoom on your page, not the church page. Okay. Okay. Hey, Sonia. Yeah, well, I could touch your leg, but they're in the second quarter, so uh, <laughs> don't tell the score. Don't well, look, if you're only going to check the that score, man, if you're only going to check the oh, score, oh, you're doing that picture picture deal. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, let's go um, with the word of prayer and then I will get started with John chapter 18. Father God, thank you uh, for this evening. This is the day uh, that you made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. God, we come, we ask that you would forgive us for all of our sins, the sins of our words the sins of our thoughts and the sins of our deed. We ask that you would wash us, cleanse us, purge and purify us, oh God. God, we confess that we are not who we ought to be, oh God, but we thank you that we're not what we were. 
And we are grateful that we're on the way to becoming someone better. And so, God, we ask that you would be with us tonight as we study your word together. We ask that you would give us insight and give us wisdom and give us clarity and illuminate your word and give us fresh revelation, oh God, for we need you. We need you tonight like we've never needed you uh, before. God, we pray this prayer in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Amen. 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 All right. So uh, thank you, Pastor Ron, uh, for last Amen. week. Uh, you all know I had a, um, I don't know, an emergency surgery, so to speak. Um, I had my gallbladder um, removed. I had a gallstone and um, uh, they said they had to had to take out my gallbladder. And so I spent about four days uh, in the hospital last week. Thank God it, there was no um, no complications or anything. I feel uh, great. Um, I have no pain. I haven't had any pain from the surgery itself, um, from the incisions or anything. But what I'm learning is that once your gallbladder is removed, um, there are certain foods you cannot eat. No. Uh, and there's only one food I'm most concerned about. I'm not concerned about, uh, they said no tomato-based foods or um, no French fries. <laughs> I don't care about any of that. There's only one food I have a problem with. Y'all gonna have to pray with me on. You know what that is? Not ice cream. Cake. Ice cream. Ice cream. There's there's nothing wrong with ice cream. Ice cream. That's the <laughs> devil. That is the devil. And so, there is nothing wrong. So, God will um, give you grace for God, ice cream. God, yeah, yeah. Y'all really have to pray for me. Y'all gonna just, y'all just gonna have to pray for me. I don't know. I don't know how to do that any other way. So you gonna have to try frozen uh, yogurt. Frozen yogurt. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, it's good. Hey. It's good. That's, yeah. Yeah. Very I good. guess that's what they call it. Sorbet. It's good. Oh, you good. know what? No, 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 no. It's not sorbet. Is it? James. That ice cream we get is it sorbet? We we're gonna have to figure this out. Y'all gonna have to pray for deliverance. I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna help you out. We're gonna make homemade ice cream. Take me. Take me. Take me. <laughs> Take me. <laughs> From soy <beans. laughs> Yeah, almonds. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> So real quick review, um, and we're going to look at chapter 18. Real quick review, um, chapter 17, as Pastor Ron uh, shared, is about Jesus' prayer. He prayed. Verses 1 through 5, uh, Jesus prayed regarding himself. He asked the Father to glorify your son. Mm -hmm. Right? To glorify your son. What does it mean to glorify, to, to uh, uh, illuminate? To, uh, to elevate, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to expose and reveal the divine identity of, of deity of the Son. Verses 9 through 19, uh, he asked on behalf of the disciples, the 11 disciples. He prayed uh, on behalf of the disciples. And then, then in verse 20 through 24, he asked on behalf of all who would believe. Yeah. And so Christ is praying, talking to the Father. He's involved in what is considered the high priestly prayer. Now, when we, when we talk about uh, the high priestly prayer, what is it that we're actually saying? What is the role of a high priest? Pastor Ron, did you talk about that last week? The role of a high priest? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, we talked about the role of the high so, priest. So that so means somebody question. ought to be able to tell me, what, right. is, what is the role <laughs> of the high priest? as relates to the high priestly Isn't prayer. Isn't it to ask for forgiveness for our sins collectively? Okay. So the high priest is an intermediary for the believer to the father, right? right. And right. so it is, the, it is the high priest that would enter into what space? The Holy Catholic of Holies. Church. The Holy of Holies. Yeah. The Holies of Holies. And in particularly on what day the, the most important day that the high priest enters into the Holy of Holies. Anybody know? 
I've talked about this before. Go ahead. Yes. Somebody, just somebody said, said it. Who said it? Day of Atonement. Yeah, the Day of what? Day of Atonement. Day of Atonement. And another way of saying atonement <laughs> is at one meant, right? Mm -hmm. And so before the Day of Atonement, before uh, um, Yom Kippur, man's relationship with God has been broken because of his what? Because of his sin, yeah. right? And so the high priest enters into the Holy of Holies in order to sprinkle what? Blood. Blood. What blood? Whose blood? The lamb's blood. The blood of the lamb. With How is he sprinkling the blood? On the, on the altar, isn't it? On the altar. What altar? What's the altar called? The no. tabernacle? No, that's the, the whole, that's the, that's what was in the, uh, in the wilderness with Moses and the children of Israel. That was the whole building was called the tabernacle. But now that there's a building and now that there's a holy of holies, what is the high priest uh, uh, sprinkling the blood on the tabernacle with? I mean, not on the tabernacle, on the Ark of the Covenant. He's sprinkling blood on the Ark of the Covenant and on what part of the Ark of the Covenant? Okay, everybody say the mercy seat. So the high priest is going into the Holy of Holies. He has dipped, he has dipped a branch. What kind of branch? Olive branch. Olive branch. Mm. It's actually called a hyssop. It's a hyssop. Yes, a hyssop branch. And the hyssop branch, remember David says, purge me with hyssop that I might be, what? Wider, wider than snow. So the, the lamb is slain, the high priest dips the hyssop branch in the blood and he sprinkles it on the mercy seat. And the mercy seat represents who? Doesn't it represent God? Where he's, where he's it buried? represents God, yes. The mercy seat represents God. Um, and the blood obviously represents who? Jesus. Represents Jesus. And so the, the blood that represents Jesus and the life of Jesus is sprinkled on the mercy seat where the Father, where the Father would be. Mm -hmm. Uh, where the father uh, would rest and receive the blood of the lamb. You guys got that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys got that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that throughout this, um, throughout this, hearing of the word. One, and this is all I want you to take away from this. The thing glorified, right? Glorify the son. And he says, those that the father gave him, he would keep them and mm -hmm. sanctify them. Those that the father gave him. you're going in and out. Yeah. We can't those hear you. who would believe their words, they that may all that they all may be what one. They all will be one. So God's to the Son, His objective, His goal for every believer is that we would be one. We bro he broke up. Um, I'm gonna give you a minute. I got something I need to check on. But I'm gonna give you a minute. Tell me what. What is Satan's uh, scheme? What is Satan trying to do to the Christian church and uh, the, the, the body of Christ? What's the thing, particularly in this climate, 2020, uh, um, October, all brought into different purposes, October 2020, what is Satan trying to accomplish as it relates to John chapter 20? Oh, John chapter 17. We'll come right back. Come think about that. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Tiga kau siapa kau buat? So what? What did you come up with? John, John Chappie. Huh? <laughs> For us But, not to be yeah. unified. Yes, that's what Satan. That is that's what Satan is really working on. He's working on division. our division, mm -hmm. and 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 you know, at, at some point, it was about being divided with the with the church and the, the world, world. Mm -hmm. and now and now it is it's not just the church and the world; it's the church and the church. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you what happened to me today. So you all know we had a protest, a peaceful protest on Saturday. Probably about I don't know, 30 people uh, from um, from uh, New Birth and other places came out, and it was in response to some hateful activity um, that was um, exercised against a local vendor. Um, there's a vendor who. Uh, is selling merchandise, um, Black Lives Matter merchandise, uh, Biden Harris merchandise over on Winchester, right by the church. Um, her stand got vandalized. I was up there yesterday. Uh, someone had thrown dog poop uh, all in the area of, mm. of where she is and sugar out there to attract ants. So she's under attack. And so, of course, uh, the Press Enterprise did a uh, did a report report, wrote an article on what had taken place. And I just felt, you know, I was like, you know what, uh, this can't happen. This, this can't happen without someone s denouncing this behavior. And I'm, I'm sad to say to you, people of God, is that the church in Temecula, Marietta, the church, we're not, we're not, we're not on the same page. We're, we're not together. And that, 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 and that doesn't matter if it's black church, white church, we are not together. We, we, we couldn't, if, if we, we couldn't do anything with one voice in this city as it relates to the church of Jesus Christ. So, um, so I said, it's fine. We, we will go out And the message that we want to convey, the message that we want to communicate is that love uh, wins over hate every time. And so we're going to come out and we're going to show love. And, we're, and that's, the, that's the message we're going to show. And if you watch, if you go back to the Press Enterprise Monday, uh, the 27th, you'll see Chip uh, with his love over hate, a sign uh, in, the, in the Press Enterprise. And that was our message. So this morning, I got an email from a man who said, can I, can I talk to you about the article? And I said, sure. So I gave him my number, said, give me a call. So he calls me and um, he says, you know, thank you for you know, taking my call. And I had some questions about uh, what you said in the article. And essentially what I said was, hey, we, we believe that black lives do matter uh, and that love conquers hate every time. He said, can you tell me about that? So I said, sure. I said, let me make sure that you understand that as a pastor, um, um, I, when I talk about Black Lives Matter, I am speaking of the, the philosophy. I'm speaking of the ideology that uh, Black people in this country uh, from 1619, when we came across the Atlantic Ocean, have not mattered to this country. And for more than 400 years, 401 years, we have still not mattered. Uh, uh, we have been the victims of violence and discrimination and lynching and, and, and all the things that you could possibly think of of a people that have been uh, marginalized and devalued. I said, so let me be clear with you. He made it, he made it clear to me that he was a Christian. Uh, I said, let me be clear to you that we are not aligning ourselves with the Black Lives Matter organization, okay? Right. I know what the tenets are in the Black Lives Matter organization, some of which is to um, obviously defund and abolish the police. You have to be out of your mind to think that that's even a reasonable idea, right? right? Do, uh, should, should, do we need funds directed? Uh, maybe reallocated in some areas, of course. But we ain't do, we're not doing this no police thing, all right? So I don't agree with that. I don't agree with the uh, eraser of the nuclear family because three of the two of the three women 
that are part of the Black Lives Matter movement are a lesbian and a queer. They are openly that. Okay, that's fine. But their objective is to, uh, is to erase, is to cancel the nuclear family. I don't agree with that. So I, so I make sure that you understand, I'm telling to this guy, that I'm not saying as a pastor, as a man, as a Christian, I'm not saying that I align with the Black Lives Matter as an organization, but, but, but what, has, what has happened is that the term Black Lives Matter has been co-opted by this organization so that anytime you use that term, that's what people think. So I said, so let me be clear, that is not what we're saying. So he says to me, well, um, can I take you to a passage of scripture? And I said, well, sure. Yeah. So he takes me to Romans chapter 13. And it begins, if you know Romans chapter 13, essentially it says that the powers that be are ordained by God. So essentially, let me summarize it. It means this, that uh, law enforcement, those who are placed in authority in our society have been placed there by God to handle, to manage those who break the law. And so he said, so you're aware of this? I said, absolutely. He said, so don't you think that this is really an issue of obeying the law? I said, hold up, brother. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you trying to tell me that the, the, the deaths that we've seen of African-American people, first of all, from the beginning to now, is because they don't obey the law? He says, well, I think that that's an issue. I think that that's a problem. I said, listen, I said, let me tell you something. If that's the reason why you're calling me today, mm -hmm. so that you can advance your idea uh -huh. that if black people would just obey the law, they would not be disproportionately killed. I says, we don't have anything else to say. I says, you can't tell me that George Floyd, who was murdered by a police officer, who was complying with the police officer, that if he had complied anymore, he wouldn't be dead. I said, no, sir. He says, well, as Christians, we should. I said, stop. Don't do that. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. I says, listen, I can be a Christian and still stand up for righteousness, rightness, justice mm -hmm. against my people. Mm -hmm. He says, well, I believe that you, you should be espousing Christ. I said, <laughs> I said, I am. Did you not hear me say love over hate? Well, where was Jesus? Jesus is in love. Jesus is love. Well, why didn't you say the name Jesus? Because I don't need to say the name Jesus. <laughs> because, because when I communicate to a world who doesn't know Jesus, mm -hmm. you don't start by throwing Jesus in people's face. Right. Just start where people are. Let's love one another. Mm -hmm. Anybody, anybody can accept love. Mm -hmm. And so he began to go on. And listen to me. I don't play games with people. I don't have time to play this. I'm more holier, more righteous than you. Yeah. I said, listen, my man. I says, if that's the reason why you're called, then our call is over. Because you're not going to uh, validate or invalidate my Christianity because mm -hmm. I don't present the gospel in the way you think it ought to be presented. And if I don't present it that way, then that means I'm less of a Christian than you. I said, see, that's our problem. Mm -hmm. And the enemy is using, he's using that kind of thinking, that kind of ideology, that kind of Christian belief to divide us. Mm -hmm. And right now, the, the Christian church is more divided than it's ever been. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's, it's so uh, counter uh, 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 biblical to what, and antithetical to what Christ wanted, what he came for. He came to make us one. He came to unify us. He came to make us Jew and Gentile into one, which is why Paul says, there is neither Jew or Gentile. There is neither bond or free. There is neither male or female. We are all one, one in Christ. But that is not how it's being seen. So the enemy is really doing an, an exceptional job uh, mm -hmm. in 2020. He has turned up the heat on the church. And there will be a great falling away. I, I, I promise you, uh, our churches are going to look different. 
Mm -hmm. um, when we return, our churches mm -hmm. are going to look different. Um, I don't know what new birth is going to look like when, uh, not if, but when uh, we return. But I can assure you that it will be different. Um, all right, so let's go to uh, John chapter 18. John chapter 18. And I want to welcome those who are on Facebook. Pastor Ron is on Facebook to converse with you. Um, and so if you have questions, um, let me see, you know what? Let me, let me, um, let me get on Facebook. Hmm. Now, Pastor, you are live on your page, your personal page. I put a link I'm live, on I'm the, live. Yeah. I'm, I put a link on the Newburgh Church okay. page because I can't I, share it to that page. Okay. But I'm live. Am I all the way live on my page? Yeah, you're all the way I live mean, on I, your I page. Wanna, am I lakeside? Am I lakeside live? Yeah, you all the way live. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to know if I'm lakeside live. That's I mean, right. I understand. Because you ain't live if you ain't lakeside live. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. John chapter 18. Y'all got it? Yes. Got it. Yes. So when Jesus has spoken these words, right? That's yeah. chapter 17. When he had spoken what he spoke in chapter 17, he went out with his 11 disciples over the brook Kidron, okay, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Mm -hmm. uh, if you ever see a topography of, uh, of, of Jerusalem, the, the main street that uh, goes around the old city of Jerusalem is actually the Kidron uh, Brook, the Brook Kidron. It's now a street. And it's, it's the, it, it divides the Garden of Gethsemane on the, uh, on the left and the old city and the city walls, the Golden Gate on the right. And so if you can, can consider Jesus came out of this area, he, uh, he, go, he uh, goes, declines down the mountainside and then up the mountain to the Garden of Gethsemane. And verse two, and Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place. Mm -hmm. For Jesus often met there with his That's disciples. Then Judas, Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there, look at what they have, with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, who are you seeking? Who are you seeking? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with him. Now, when he had said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Then he asked them again, who are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> Jesus answered, I just told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way. He said this, that the same might be fulfilled, which he spoke. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost none. Then Simon Peter, gangster Peter, <laughs> having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into the sheep. 
shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? I'm going to stop. Uh, I'm going to stop there. All right. Um, so here, here's, the, here's the picture. Jesus and the 11 uh, are over the Kidron Valley, the Kidron Ravine, to the Garden of Gethsemane. This was a common place where Jesus met with his disciples. Mm -hmm. Earlier in the night, Jesus had taken Peter, James, and John to do what? Pray. 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 To pray, right? Mm -hmm. Though all of the 11 were in the garden, mm -hmm. Jesus was so emotionally distressed. What does that tell us about Jesus? It was his humanity. His humanity. He was human. Mm -hmm. So, so should, we, should we tell people that it's not very Christian if you are experiencing anxiety or distress? Or is that unchristian to do? No, we yeah. shouldn't. No. We, we shouldn't tell people that yeah. because it's probably more Christian than, than many other things. Right, it's pretty natural because it was natural for our Lord to be grieved, to be distressed, because He knew all. He knew what was getting ready to happen. Now we operate in distress and in anxiety because we think we know what's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't know, right? Which is why, which is why He tells us in Proverbs three, five, and six to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not allow your heart to become paralyzed and grit, but and lean not to your own understanding. Better said, misunderstanding. In other words, don't lean to what you think you know that you don't know because you don't know the future. Amen. Because even if God, who did know the future, became distressed, mm -hmm. right? It's not uncommon for us to do the same. So when Paul says in Ephesians to be anxious for nothing, but everything by what? Prayer. By prayer and supplication, Paul was not saying that you that you should that that I must say Paul was not saying that you physiologically should not become anxious. That's not possible, is it? It's 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 impossible not to become anxious. Right? It's a part of a physiological response to the unknown, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Brother Van, Deacon Van, uh, myself, others who've been in law enforcement, listen, we train, we train, we train, we train, we train, we do scenarios, we do walkthroughs, we do role plays, we train, we train, we train, right? We shoot, we practice, pow, 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 practice, got to qualify, right? We, gotta, we got our vests on. We are prepared for just about any situation. Mm -hmm. You go 97, you go on a scene where you gotta, you gotta do, uh, you gotta serve a arrest warrant, you gotta, you gotta go into a bank, whatever it is. It don't matter how prepared you are, you got butterflies in your stomach. Am I right, Deacon? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. It don't Amen, matter, brother. <laughs> right? You have, there's a degree of anxiety because you don't know what you don't know, right? Mm. So it is, it is physiologically um, um, normal to, to uh, experience anxiety. But what Paul is saying is that don't let that anxiety paralyze you, right? Uh. Jesus was, was gripped with anxiety and, and fully distressed and grief, but it didn't paralyze him. Right. right. And so and so the alternative, the way we battle our anxiety, he says, is that we we humble ourselves and we go to God in prayer. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, with all prayer and supplication. And then it says, and the and the uh, the response of God, the spiritual response of God is that he will guard our hearts and our minds. Again, using my law enforcement uh, background and analogy. Listen, the one thing. If, I, if, if I'm going, if we're, we're on a team and we're getting ready to go and serve an arrest warrant, everybody got to be, be ready to move. Nobody can be paralyzed. I'm about, I don't think I can do this. What do, 
What you mean you don't think you can do this? <laughs> what? If you don't think you can do this, you go back to the band. What? No, no, no. Nobody can be paralyzed. Everybody moves. Everybody, listen, we got this. We're going to trust each other. We're going to trust our weapons. We're going to trust our training. It's the same. I'm going to trust God. And so here Jesus is in the garden. Mm -hmm. He's in the garden. He knows what he's getting ready to experience. Mm -hmm. He knows it is beyond imaginable the pain that he's getting ready to experience. And so what does he do? He, uh, he did what we do. He calls his friends. I don't know about you, mm -hmm. but there's nothing like having some brothers or some sisters to call on when things are bad. Yeah. And, and listen, you don't even need a lot. Right. One, one or two, one, if you got one or two, you got, you got plenty, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so Jesus had how many? Three. Eleven. Yeah, three. Wait, that's eleven. <laughs> three quarters. He had eleven, but he wasn't, he wasn't tight with all eleven, right? Right. 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 He, was, he was tight with three, Mm -hmm. And then what? Mm -hmm. He was, he had an eight spoon coon. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, had, he had one, he had one ace, ace. right? <laughs> he had one, come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. Right. Come on, you, that's the, that's the one you call when you, when you ain't got nobody else to call, mm -hmm. right? That's the, that's your ace. Mm -hmm. That's your ride or die. And so, ride die. that's your ride or die. <laughs> ride and die. Who, who was that for Jesus? Who was that for Jesus? John. 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 You know what's interesting about that? John was a young man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John, yeah. if, if John was 20, I'd be surprised. But he was a young man. Jesus was about 33 uh, about this time. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, Peter, even a little older than that. Right. Mm -hmm. But remember, John is also the one that's going to live the longest. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. He's actually the last disciple to die. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, he was exiled on the Isle of Patmos. Mm -hmm. uh, he received the revelation of the Lord Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, he saw a lot. He was at the cross with Jesus and, and mm -hmm. Jesus' mother, Mary. And so right. Jesus and and John had a great relationship. So um, he, he, he asked them. To, to pray with them. So Jesus went a little beyond them, fell on his face, and he asked the Father that if possible to take that cup, the cup mm -hmm. represented what? What the cup represent? The pain? The pain. Give me more. Mm -hmm. What the cup? He says, Lord, Father, if you will take this cup from me, what the cup represent? Come on, Facebook. What the cup represent? His death. Yeah, represented his death. What else? His sacrifice, what he was about to do on the cross, wasn't it? All of that. All of that. Everything Rick that was getting ready to happen. Yeah, right? Rick Rogers the, said the, his the, blood. Yeah, his blood, right? Mm -hmm. uh, his life everything right and so um jesus said look if there's any way we can pass this cup he, what, he was willing to do the father's will but he knew that it meant great agony for him mm -hmm. so he was not a he was not afraid of man or or his or or the, the death that he was getting ready to experience on the cross but he knew that god's wrath against sin would be the cup he would drink and so god's uh, god's wrath his fury for all sin would be poured out against the sun. I want you to look at John 3.16. Look at John 3.16. I'm going to pause just for a minute. Mm -hmm. I want you to read John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. So here, Jesus knows, <laughs> Jesus knows that we're talking about, we're talking about giving, not just, not just enduring pain, but he's talking about the wow. full wrath of God that he is getting ready to to accept, to be poured out on him as payment for sin. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you. I, I don't know. 
maybe maybe I'm just a punk. But um, I, I mean, there, there's things that happen in my life right now that I'm like, Lord, I don't know if I can do that. I, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can take that. I don't know if I can handle that. I, I, I don't. I don't want that. And and I'm not. I'm not. I, I, if I'm honest with you, there's there's times when I just don't. I don't obey God like I should. Mm -hmm. I don't because of the cost. Mm -hmm. And so when you think, and I have no, and I have no power, right? right? I have no, I have no power to change anything, mm -hmm. right? Jesus has all the power, right? <laughs> right? And he chose not to change anything, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. if I had the power, I'd be, I, you know those movies where you can go back and you can change something so the outcome would be different, mm -hmm. right? You ever seen those movies? And 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 and, yep. and what I like about those, what I like about those is that it's in most of those movies, but whenever you change one thing, it 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 changes. It, there's a ripple effect, right? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. either you didn't have this child, or you didn't have this income or this wealth. You know, it, th right. and so you might as well just live it like God has has ordained in order for you to live it and let right. Him handle it, right? Mm -hmm. And so, right. Uh, and so here, uh, Jesus is is praying, and Jesus told the three to keep watching and praying that they not enter into what? What did he tell them he didn't want them to enter? Anybody remember? What did he say? Watch that you don't enter into what? He said he warned the disciples, keep praying and keep watching so you don't enter into temptation. Anybody? Temptation. temptation. Yes, sir. Temptation. Right. Because the spirit is what? Wicked. The spirit, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is what? Weak. Flesh is weak. And so three times Jesus said the same kinds of things to Peter, James, and John, right? Mm -hmm. Three mm -hmm. times. And what did they do? Fell asleep. Fell asleep. Fell asleep. <laughs> Fell asleep. Why? Get along. Why do you think? They're tired. <laughs> they're, tired. they're tired walking in and yeah, they're tired come on you you and i you and i have done that you and i have fallen asleep and then woke up and start praying again mm -hmm. right oh yeah you ever did that what wasn't it also well, why? fourth watch pastor yeah it was late it was late yeah van you you you, you were a graveyard before oh yes yeah what's the what's the bewitching hour what's the bewitching hour three what Three o'clock in the morning, two o'clock. <laughs> Three, four o'clock. Man, yeah. I don't care. You gotta get up. You gotta walk around. You gotta drink yeah. some coffee because you need them, you know, in the cartoons where they put the toothpicks on the eyes, <laughs> and you cannot keep your eyes open. <laughs> that three o'clock, four o'clock hour, oh my lord, it's just it's the worst. And so, yeah, right. these guys are sleepy, right? But but tell me something. Tell me something. And this is for everybody. When something's bothering you, when you're worried about something, can you sleep? No. 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 So tell me, tell me why Jesus couldn't sleep, but they could. Because they were with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Come on. Come on. Think about this thing now. All right, so let, let's use this. They didn't know it was coming. They didn't know what was coming. All right, come on, work with that. Work with that. Give me some more of that. Oh, Give me some more of that. They didn't know what was coming. They didn't feel the burdens that Jesus was feeling. Right. Bango, they bango. There you go. See, if the doctor says, Kim, you have a surgery in the morning, right? And I go, all right, sis, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there in the morning. Uh, for your surgery, right? And the doctor says, you know, be here at five o'clock. So, okay, I'll meet you at the surgery, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to bed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sleep. Right. I I'm going to sleep. I'm going I'm to snore and I'm going to drool. <laughs> <laughs> because why? You're not, You're having, not having a surgery. surgery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having a surgery. <laughs> right? 
Kim, you, you may not sleep all night. Right, right. And I'll, I'll set my alarm and I'll go, oh man, I got to go down and be with my sister. <laughs> I'm so happy to go down and be with my sister. Yeah, for her yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm coming, sis. I'm coming. Right? I'm out later. Well, I, listen, I'm going to set that alarm and I'm going to be like, oh, okay. All right, I'm, I'm going to go. But I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm not experiencing it like you're experiencing it, mm -hmm. right? And so the disciples didn't, didn't experience what Jesus was experiencing, and three times they fell asleep. But listen to what Jesus asked them. Listen to what he asked them. Could you not watch with me for an hour? Just for an hour. What, what, what does that convey to us about Jesus? What does that tell us about him? Some of him about his humanity and um, that he was, you know, like anybody, you know, at this one moment in my life, you know, I just want a friend. I just want somebody who can sit with me, talk to me, just, just, just for this hour, you know, just for an hour. Yep. Um, you're right, Sonia. And, and that says this to me. Um, we all need somebody. I, I mean... You, you've heard me tell the, the, the illustration of the little boy that kept falling out of bed, right? And he, he'd go into his dad's room and says, Dad, I, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm afraid I keep falling out of bed. And dad would come, put him back in bed. He'd fall out of bed. And he, he said, I'm scared, Dad. I'm afraid. He'd pick him up, put him back in bed. And then um, uh, the dad says, son, come on. You know we pray every night. We said our... He said, I bet times prayer, you know that the Lord is with you. He says, Dad, I know the Lord is with me, but I need someone with skin on. Mm. Listen, let, let, let's, not, let's not be so, so spiritual, right, mm. that we pretend like the presence of people, of our friends, of our loved ones is not of great importance to us. Of course the Lord is there. Of course I shouldn't be afraid, but I am. Of course he promised to meet and supply all of my needs. It drives me crazy when, when, when I hear people that are struggling and then people just throw, throw scripture at them. A, a, a brother, I'm on this, I'm on this group, this uh, theology group of pastors, African-American pastors. And this one pastor says, um, um, I, I'm, I'm getting ready to start my doctoral or ministry program. And he says, but I'm afraid of failing. Right? And that was mm -hmm. what was in the post. And I started reading all these, the Lord says, fear not. And, you know, be strong in the Lord. And I'm thinking, oh, man, you guys, um, he knows all those scriptures. Mm -hmm. he, he, that's not what he needs. That's right. so I just said. Good, you're afraid. All right, good. Thank you for being honest. Thank you for being transparent. All right, so now you're ready. Now you're ready to go forward. We'll, we'll, we'll stand with you. We'll encourage you, right? We'll be with you, period. Yeah, you're afraid. We get afraid too. Go, get in there, and, and be an overachiever. Mm -hmm. Listen, uh, is the scripture powerful? Does it minister to us? Yes. But can we please not be so spiritual that we don't, we don't get to where people really are. People yeah. are afraid. People do get afraid. Kids are uh, uh, struggling. I mean, I mean, come on. Amen. Jesus was hurting and all he wanted and all he needed was his friends to just stay up with him. Mm -hmm. That's what we see. Mm -hmm. And the text. Let's move on. So what happens? They go to the Garden of Gethsemane. Judas knows that they're there. Let's look at verses 2 to 11. Judas knew about the place because he had been there with Jesus and the others, right? Mm -hmm. He brought, right. he led the Roman cohort, the officers and the chief. Now, how many, and Dan, I know you can relate to this. I know you can, but and I know you've seen some of the uh, video of individuals getting stopped. And one of the questions that people who are not in law enforcement always ask is why are there so many police cars here? Mm -hmm. You know, 
You got one person, but you got seven cars. You got 12 <laughs> officers. Why? Why do you have so many cops? Now, there's, there's a plethora, a plethora of reasons why that is possible. But sometimes it is just overkill, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is just overkill. And here we have a situation where we have the Roman cohort. Those are Roman soldiers. Right. We have the police officers of the Sanhedrin, right? The police officers of the religious leaders that have come from the chief priests, right? And we have the Pharisee. We've got a lot of people come to arrest Jesus. And what are they Over 600, with? wasn't it? Light, that means torches. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for one man, right? So man. Weapons, mm -hmm. weapons. But look at what happens. Jesus asked, so who y'all looking for? <laughs> I love that. I mean, I just, I, you know, you know you, sometimes when we read the Bible, you know, we read it with these these and thou's and those because that's the king's English. I'm not sure that was what, that's how Jesus was. You know, Jesus said, also, what's up, guys? Who y'all looking for? <laughs> so what are you looking? We're looking for Jesus. Where is Jesus? <laughs> Jesus. He said, oh. Oh, y'all looking for me? Uh, well, I'm him. The scripture says they drew back and fell to the ground. Now, it doesn't tell us there was a blast of wind. Uh, it does. It only describes what happens to them physically, mm -hmm. right? How they reacted to the presence of God, because look at the words that he uses. I am he. Now, we've gone all the way through John. We've heard all the times Jesus has, has used the term, I am, I am, I am the light. I am the light of the world. I am the first and the last. I am the resurrection and the light. He, just over and over again, and so they drew back and fell to the ground. Uh, 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 and I could go through all of these. I am you who will die for your sins. I am before Abraham. I am. In John 18, 5, 6, and 8, he said the same thing. What did Jesus, what did Jesus say in John 18, 8? Jesus told the ones who came to arrest him to let the 11 go so they're in, to go their way in order to fulfill the word which he spoke in John 17, 12. He says, none lost but the son of perdition. So Jesus is, is, is saying firmly, I do not want my people to be hurt. I want the word of God to be confirmed and affirmed. And he does just that. A cohort, according, and Mary, you just brought this out. Let me give you this footnote. A cohort is a battalion. It is one-tenth of a Roman legion, 600 men under normal conditions. Several commentators mentioned that it may not have been a full battalion that went, John MacArthur, one of them. In practice, a cohort normally numbers 600 men, but could sometimes refer to as little as 200. Don't matter, 200 for one man is a lot, right? So Jesus told Peter to put his sword away, he said, the cup which the father had given him, he would drink. This cup being the suffering he was about to experience. Jesus didn't need Peter's sword. He could have, listen, he could have called 12 legions of angels down to rescue him. But he didn't because these events were going to happen. They were sure to happen. Jesus was arrested and the disciples fled and left him alone. But Peter mm. followed at a distance. Let's go back to the text. Mm. Let's go back to the text. Verse 12. Then the detachment of troops and the captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. And they led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. Annas was uh, uh, the former high priest but out of respect, Caiaphas uh, takes him to him first.
first. Now, it was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it was expedient for one man to die for the people, right? He said that unknowingly, prophetically. So Simon Peter, verse 15, followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Who's that? John. John. Now, the disciple was known to the high priest and went with Jesus into the courtyard. So look, John has a little favor. He, he knows the high priest. The high priest knows him. The high priest has got to know that John has some relationship with Jesus, but he doesn't harm him. He allows him to come in. Verse 16, but Peter stood at the door outside, kind of <laughs> peeking in. Uh -huh. Then the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to her who kept the door and brought Peter in. Then the servant girl who kept the door said to Peter, hmm, you're not also one of the man's disciples, are you? Mm. He said, I am not. Now, what, what, what's interesting about what she says? What, what's interesting about what she says? Read that again. It's kind of like she know who he is. Right, she's seen him before. She's seen him before, but listen to what she says. You are not also one of the man's disciples. That tells us something. That tells us that she knows that John is yeah. one of Jesus' disciples. Yeah. She's yeah. not hostile toward him, right? Mm -hmm. The Pharisees are not more. hostile toward him, right? right. There, there doesn't appear to be a reason for Peter to be so anxious. She's not being hostile, mm -hmm. but something's going on in Peter. Because he immediately says what? I am not. I'm not. I'm not. Mm -mm. Now, the servants and the officers who had made a fire of coals stood there, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. Come on. Do you see the scene? Mm -hmm. The servants, the officers, it's cold. Peter's in the same group with them. So the high priest begins to question Jesus about the, his disciples and his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I taught openly in the synagogues and in the temple where the Jews always meet. And in secret, I have said nothing. In other words, I have spoken openly to all of you. Why do you ask me? Mm -hmm. Ask those who have heard me. Come on, y'all. You, you got to know Jesus is no punk. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he is, he, he is said, why y'all tripping? Mm -hmm. Y'all have heard me preach. All these people have heard me preach. I've not said any of this in private. Why are you asking me this? As yeah. those who heard me, what I said to them. Indeed, they know what I said. And when he said these things, one of the officers who stood by struck him in the mouth. Come on. Mm -hmm. You got to know Jesus wasn't like, oh, my brethren, you know that I have not spoken in quiet. No, no, no. <laughs> That's why he got punched in the face mm -hmm. he stood his ground. because he was indignant he was like look y'all tripping up in here <laughs> and they punched him in the face with Pastor. the palm of his hand yes also he knew that this trial was not legal because back then they had to have two or three witnesses uh when yeah. they came before the court and yeah. this was held in secret at night so he yeah. also was he knew the law. He knew the Jewish law, and he knew that this wasn't an illegal um, Absolutely. hearing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's you know, all through these proceedings, uh, really leading up to, to Pontius Pilate and what took place there, all of that was illegally done, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so um, let's move on. That's good. Good point. Uh, do you answer the high priest like that, which is why he got smacked in the mouth? Jesus answered him, if I have spoken evil, 
bear witness of the evil, but well, why do you strike me? But if well, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. So Annas recognized that he was not getting anywhere with Jesus. And so he sends him to Caiaphas' house because if Jesus was to be brought before Pilate for execution, the legal uh, uh, accusation must be brought by the current reigning high priest, i.e. being Caiaphas, in his capacity as a chairman of the Sanhedrin, okay? So this is, this is really an interesting, uh, an interesting scene. Um, what happens when Jesus got to Caiaphas? Um, so we know, Anna sent Jesus, verse 24. Let's look at it, verse 24. Then Anna sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon stood and warmed himself. Therefore they said to him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. The second time, right? Right. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of him, whose ear Peter cut off, said, hold up. Didn't I see you in the garden mm -hmm. before you cut my ear off? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> or before you cut my relative's ear off, I should say, right? He was a relative of him whose ear Peter cut off. <laughs> Peter denied again, and immediately the rooster crowed. Must be six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> or at least sometime around then. He wide awake now. Because you know, the interesting thing, and Van, Van, you can attest to this, once you can get past that three o'clock, four o'clock hour, if you can get past of it, pass it to five o'clock, you are wide right. awake. You're good. <laughs> you, you are good. good. You are wide awake. <laughs> Right? You'll have no problem driving home. You're not sleepy, right? Matter of fact, when you get home, you got to wind down. That's right. <laughs> well, here we have Jesus before Caiaphas. So Peter denied Jesus the last few times the rooster crows. He then went out, and the scripture says that he wept bitterly. The chief priests and the whole council, a term used for the Sanhedrin, gathered there. They tried to obtain testimony against Jesus from false witnesses. Caiaphas asked Jesus if he was the Christ, the son. Jesus answered that he said it himself. He also said that he'd see the, that he that they'd see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. He's talking about himself. Caiaphas rips his robe. In, in a statement that Jesus had blasphemed and was deserving of death. And so what happens? They humiliate Jesus by spitting in his face, by slapping him, by beating him, by taunting him. And these were, this was not the crowd. These were the Jewish leaders. These were the religious leaders. And this says to me, so much of the pain we experience in church are at the hands of those who profess to be our spiritual leaders. Amen. And we've got to deal with that. And I think, I feel like God is dealing with that right now, right? Um, uh, the ones who should have been, they, these are the ones who should have been directing others to worship their Messiah. Instead, they were humiliating and abusing the Savior. And so soon thereafter, it's morning. Uh, when it was day, they led him to their council and they conferred together to put Jesus to death. And they sent him bound to Pilate. Um, um, there, there's a lot, there's a lot to say here. Um, so, you know, let's read the rest of the text and then I'll just take some questions. Uh, it's a familiar passage, um, but um, verse 28, 
Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium, and it was early morning, for they themselves did not go into the Praetorium, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out to them and said, what accusations do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, if he were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him to you. Then Pilate said to him, you take him and judge him according to your law. Therefore, the Jews said to him, it is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. So they are even admitting and acknowledging that they had no rights to, to put Jesus to death. It was outside of their law, but they were breaking their own law because they so wanted Jesus to be put to death. And so look, when Rome, when Rome took over Judea and began direct rule through a, a prefect in, in uh, AD 6, right? The, the, uh, the, the Jews, uh, the, the, the right for these things were taken away from the Jews. They could not just uh, inadvertently uh, um, uh, put someone to death. It had to be up under the control of uh, the Roman governor. Uh, mm -hmm. Capital punishment was the most jealously guarded of all attributes of Roman prov provincial administration because the Romans wanted to rule with their armed fist. They didn't want anybody putting anybody to death but them. Remember, crucifixion only came into existence under the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was considered the most cruelest, the most cruelest of deaths. And it ended with the Roman Empire. <sighs> Verse 33, then Pilate entered the Praetorium again, called Jesus and said to him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, are you speaking for yourself about this, or did others tell you this concerning me? I'm telling you, Jesus is gangster. <laughs> gangster. Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, mm. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm going back to my roots. I'm going back to my acting, to my thespian days. I want to play the role of Jesus, and I want to play it from the hood. <laughs> my kingdom my kingdom is not of this world if my kingdom were of this world my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews but now my kingdom is not from here Pilate therefore said to him are you a king then Jesus answered you say rightly that I am a king for this cause I was born and for this cause, I have come into the world that I should bear witness of the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him at all. Taking the place of Barabbas, but you have a custom that I should release someone to you at the Passover. Do you therefore want me to release the king of the Jews? Then they all cried out saying, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. <sighs> what questions do you have in John chapter 19? We're getting close, chapter 18, excuse me. We're getting close to the end of this book. What questions come to, to your mind about John chapter 18? You know, Pastor, what's interesting to me is they did not want to go into Pilate's house to defile themselves because of the Passover, but Jesus is the Passover. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. very so-called thing that they were trying to not defile themselves with. Right. They were defiling. They were defiling themselves. They were defiling. Right. They were defiling the Passover lamb. Overland. Yep, you're you're absolutely you're absolutely right. What a what a what a uh, conundrum there, right? What a what a spiritual conundrum um, that that right. that that's that's revealed. 
What else do you see there? What else do you see? Good point, Mary. What else do you see? Anyone? All right, so look, next week, we're going into chapter 19, but I want you to focus. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time in the whole chapter. There's so much there. And it's, it's, it's what, you, what you know already. I want you to focus on verses 17 through 42. I want you to read it because we're gonna focus on the crucifixion of Jesus. 17, John 8, John chapter 19, 17 through 42. This is that we're coming to the home stretch. And we're going to spend our time uh, looking at the crucifixion of Jesus. Okay. Any questions from anyone? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that that chapter, it just seems like um, that there, there, no one was listening. They didn't really, they just had that. I mean, I know it was placed. I know it was going to happen that the crucifixion was going to happen and that he, that all of this was set in place to happen. But the, the human man was just not listening. They didn't care if they were, they, they know that he did have a, a him, he know, they knew he wasn't a criminal, but they didn't care. Mm -hmm. It's almost like um, today we have our laws today, you know, we can do no, I mean, you can stand there and not do any wrong and then somebody's blaming you for doing something because, because you're standing only because of the color of your skin, basically. Mm -hmm. you. I mean, it's kind of like that to me. You're yeah. basically just being, he was just being singled out just because. I mean, he's, I think because of the power that he possessed with the people and they just was not going to have him speaking out and they just wanted him gone. So they'll rather get, give up the, uh, uh, a robber than to have him being a great leader mm -hmm. and losing their uh, position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. That's good. <clears throat> What's well, another thing I see here, Pastor? They, they didn't. They didn't want to just lock him up. He, it's like he did no crime. It's like going to steal a candy bar and being put to death for it. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. yeah but why? But why? What? What? What was their reason for wanting him completely out of the way? I, 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 mean, I think because of the power he possessed. I think that they, the the foreseen power that they feared of the following that he was pulling and uh, the stories were following him um, throughout the countryside. So they knew the power he had. Yeah. And, 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 and probably more, I, you're, you're hundred percent right. Yeah. It's hundred percent right. But it was the power that they were losing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they didn't right? want, they, 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 were they scared to lose feared what they were going to lose. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's all right. Mm. Yeah, it was like, you know, like Martin Luther King Jr. Same kind of thing, yeah. you know, hey, yeah. this guy got to go. Yeah. He's got to go. Too much, yep. you know. We'll too much too power. Much. Yeah. yeah. Too much power. We'll lose too mm -hmm. much. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that, that's, essentially, that's essentially what we're dealing with right now. It's right. essentially what we're dealing with in this whole conversation about race, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the reason why we can't, people cannot agree mm -hmm. that Black lives matter it's also to admit that we were culpable as a nation into how black people have been treated all of this time. Mm -hmm. And so if I say that you matter now, right, in this, in this moment, it is to admit mm -hmm. the atrocities mm -hmm. that I have or this nation has done against black people. Exactly. Right. Right. And they right. refuse to admit that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Not, not, exactly. not. That's too much like right. Yes, yeah, too much like right. <laughs> he, even it more is. importantly, Pastor, is they uh, feel that by the races, the so-called minorities growing, that they're losing power. And that's, that's the, the same, same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 The, the, that's, 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 listen, listen, that's what happened. That's what happened in Egypt, right? That's mm -hmm. what happened in Egypt after Joseph. Whoa, yep. whoa, whoa, hold on. There's too many Jews. There's too many Israelites. Jews. Oh, too many Hebrews. Hebrews we got to yeah. imprison them. We got to, you know. Israel. Listen, when we came over here as, an, as a people, we were big. We were stronger. We just, mm -hmm. This is the reason why <coughs> they chose to enslave Black people and not the Indians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Indians were smaller. They were frailer. Mm -hmm. And so what did they do to the Indians? They just tried to annihilate them. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to wipe them out. Right. Right. And then and then and then enslave us. It's, mm -hmm. it's, the history of our nation is rather 
bleak. It, it is rather dire. And it's not, it's, if I'm honest with you, it's not one to be proud of. It's right. really not. It's not. And, 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 and those who, who attempt to, to speak of the, the pride that we should have is not looking at uh, the, the full scope of the history of this, of this country. All right. All right. I'm gonna let y'all go so uh, Brother Van can get to the fourth quarter. Um, and, hey, don't uh, tell me who wins because I got no take. <laughs> I won't tell you. I won't tell you. Listen, let me pray for y'all. God, I Father, thank you for today. I, I want to bless you and praise you, and thank you for just an opportunity to study the word together. Thank you for your people who were uh, so uh, involved and so. Uh, connected and, and just growing uh, in your word. And we just ask that you bless them and that you continue to bless them. We thank you now. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 No, no church meeting this week. No, no, no church meeting. Okay. okay. No no church church. Meeting. Oh, okay. the first okay. Saturday. No church meeting. Okay. Yeah, first Saturday. No meeting. Well, Pastor, I'm glad to know that you're at home and you're doing well. We were um, totally worried about you, but we, were, we got news that you were doing great. <laughs> James told me you made it home. <laughs> but we're glad to know that you're I'm home. A... And, I, and you cracked me up when you said you were out, that they got out like you were buying medicine. I said, he's out buying medicine. I said, was he driving or somebody driving him? Oh, my right. God, up. And then you showed up at the protest. I'm like, yep. whatever. Yeah. I say he's all good. Yeah. <laughs> really, I like, felt really, I felt really good. I felt really yeah. good. I still feel really good. I mean, the surgery was was what, my only problem is eating. That's my yeah, only that's problem. It. But that yeah. was your problem there, because you know how you yeah. get the stones. <laughs> yeah. No, that's food. how I got there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I got there. All right, I'm gonna let y'all go. I'm gonna give you a bowl of ice cream. I got this. I'll eat more with nobody. Switch over to popsicles. <laughs> All right, love, love you. Guys. Take care, everyone. Good night. Okay, see you guys. Bye, Bye, family. See you around. Bye. 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 Mother, Thanks, Sonia, Bye. Nicole. Bye, fam. Bye. Bye, Kimmy. Bye. All right. Bye, Bye. 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 <laughs> All right, y'all. See you, Ron. <laughs>